welcome to Psychic Medium, Tony Green. I am Tony Green, the Psychic Medium with little strings. Uh, okay, everybody. Um, we are going to do 60 minutes of Q&A today. You get to call in 845-277-9131 and ask questions or connect with a loved one up above. Or if you're watching live, on YouTube, you can um, post your question in the chat and I'll be happy to answer it there. So um, just really quick, please don't get scammed. I never reach out to anyone and tell them that they need anything. I, I never reach out to anybody and say, hey, you need a reading or you need whatever. I That's not me. Please do not get scammed. The only way to get a reading is through my website and uh, to call me directly. I do not do DM readings. I do not do email readings. I just, we're talking over the phone when I do your reading. So now that I've said that, let's move to the next part of the show. And that is the part where I do names. This could be your name your loved one up above's name, or the name of somebody you both knew, like a niece, nephew, grandchild, sister, brother, mother, whomever. So as I say the names, if it's your name, excellent. If it's not, that's okay. There are plenty of other ways that they will connect with us. The first name I'm hearing is Doug and or Douglas. The next name I'm hearing is Jerome. Jilly. It could be Gilly. It's G-I-L-L-E. Gilly or Jilly. The next name I'm hearing is Maria. Uh, okay. Maricello. The next name I'm hearing is uh, Lauren. Lauren. Okay, Lauren. The next name I'm hearing is Bob. The next name I'm hearing is Sally. The next name I'm hearing is Rose or Rosemary. The next name I'm hearing is Oscar. The next name I'm hearing is... <laughs> I'm trying to say it. I want to make sure I get many of the pronunciations on the names that take me a second. I just, I'm not familiar with the pronunciation, so I'm trying... It's either li labyrinth or labyrinth. The second part I have correct. It's just that first part of the the name or the word that I'm not getting. I'm not sure which way it goes. Um, and the next name I'm hearing is Cindy. The next name I'm hearing is L I, I want to say this name and I heard three names. So Luis, Luella, and Luann. All three of those came through together, just so you know. Um, the next, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> the next name, I'm only going to do <laughs> Trina. Every time I, say, I go to say, okay, I'm almost done with names. So many more keep coming in. Um, the next name is Tommy. And then the next name is uh, Tabitha. And that's where I'm going to end the names. I'm going to go directly into songs. This could be a song that answers a question that you've been asking about your life. It could be a song that is a song they, a loved one loved, you loved. It might have been played at an anniversary, a wedding, whatever it is. If you know the song, you know the song. And for those of you who are new, I cannot sing. I, I physically words come out of my mouth. Nobody calls it singing. So please don't, don't, don't feel like you need to let me know. I can't sing. We, we everybody knows I can't sing. Okay. The first, the first song is I can't stand the rain, that song. And then the next song is, um, uh, I couldn't sing that, that, Oh, I, that it's I can't stand the rain, but I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't do any of it. But the next song is um, I can hear the beat, but I can't. 
it's like he's a night crawler or she's a night prowler. I th it's a rock song, like maybe a 70s or 80s rock song. Okay, the next song is um, Mia Moore. I don't, if you know, you know, Mia Moore. The next song is um, I'm only going to do once one more song because they're coming through quite slow this evening. And the next song is uh, it's actually not a song. It's it's the they just keep saying the Juilliard School, Juilliard School. So that's kind of specific, whoever that's for, it's just going to be for you. Okay, if you'd like to call in and ask a question, the call in number is 845-277-9131. And then I'm going to alternate that if I have questions in the chat on YouTube. So we have quite a few people in the chat. We have Sally, um, hey Sally, and A is here and Fawn is here. Thank you so much you guys for being here. I am going to go to, um, to uh, uh, thank you, Sally. I'm going to go first to the calls. When I say your area code, please tell me your name and where you're calling from, and then have either an exact question or connection, um, an exact question about life, love, career, finances, whatever it is, and then a connection such as my mom, Judy. And if you have a question, for them, please give me the question right away. So the first person is 551. 551, what's your name and where Hi, are you call? Go ahead, love. Hi, I'm Jennifer from New Jersey. Hey, Jennifer, okay. how are you um, today? I, I was just wondering, mine's about um, if you could connect with my father at all. I'm wondering if you have a message from him. <laughs> okay, and what's your father's first name, please? William. William. But they did call him Billy, and you mentioned Billy before in your <laughs> I name. Did. So maybe that's him kind of <laughs> I did. I did. I <laughs> did. Okay, thank you. Um, oh. The first thing I want to ask you, Jennifer, do you have a specific question you have for your father or just anything he wants to say? Is there something going on in anything you? Anything he wants to say. Well, you know, um, I'm hearing, Jennifer. I'm trying he, to get involved with. Go ahead. I'm hearing there's something going on in your life, and it's okay if you ask about that, but go ahead, love. Um, I kind of have a situation with some neighbors. Are you picking up on that at all? Um, it's a couple that lives above me, and I feel like they're spying on me, and the girl's, like, saying she talks to the law towards me. She hates me every day. I mean, it's very evil Okay. what I deal with. I need a place to live, so I just tune it out, but I don't know what is wrong with these people, but I do feel like they're spying on me. Am I wrong? Um, no. What they, I'm going to, well, here's what I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to give you guys a bit of a story from my life because just to validate. Um, okay. First and foremost, Jennifer, while I'm giving the message, please let me give them, I know it. you're going to, people always want to, uh, you know, talk while, while the message is coming through and confirm it and ask, but um, when the message is coming through and I'm channeling, um, let, let them channel. First and foremost, there's a place that you can get a detector to find cameras in your home. And um, even if you don't, they're very inexpensive and um, you can use it later on in life. The next thing I'm hearing is uh, they know your your father knows that you need a place to live, but it, it's okay if you start um, like oh recording. Okay, that's the recording. It's okay if you start like recording what they're doing in whatever way you can. I know it may be difficult it's to hard. do that at first, but just try to figure out a way to do that. Um, and I I do know I've had some experiences in the past with tenants that were very, very bizarre. Um, one of the things I'm hearing here is there's some, I don't, I don't know if it's insecurity or jealousy with this female um, 
because I think her husband likes me and she I'm pretty and and like I'm happy doing what I do and she yeah. doesn't like that. I think she is jealous. Yeah, you know, but if... she needs to just get over that because I'm not moving because of her. But I don't feel I should be spied on. I do feel they say he has works with connections with photography and the police, and I feel like they are hooked up because. I hear them make comments, the walls are so thin, like at the time I'm doing them, and there'd be no way unless they physically saw me. Okay, so here's... So I feel they go from room to room, and it's stressing me out. And I do think she's jealous. I think you're right. Okay, so here's... Uh, Is there something I can do to protect myself from that negative energy besides move? Okay, here's... I'm just going to mute you for a second because I thank you for confirming what I'm saying. I really do appreciate your confirmations. Um, I do feel like there's some insecurity and jealousy, but I feel like no matter what you do, they, they're not going to stop. Okay. And you're, unfortunately, um, you are not going to outstay them either. Like there's not a thing where they're going to get up and go, um, because it's, good for them. They don't need to. They don't want to. They don't need to. They know they can run people off. They've done it before. They'll do it again. Um, And I'm going to say, even though she's jealous of you, um, there's some insecurity and some jealousy there. I feel like any woman that would live there would be a threat to her, not because of the woman, but because of how her partner is. Okay, so we're going to say the best thing for you to do, and I know you need a place to live and you might not be able to go so quickly. The best thing to do is to start planning your next move. I do feel like once you start planning your next move, and I wouldn't tell them you're moving or where you're going, I wouldn't do that. Um, I would keep that to yourself. And if there's nothing you can do, if they are associated with the police and you can't take that route, and you can't, uh, you know, if you get a tool and you find cameras, you won't be able to prove they put it there. You could put your own cameras in because if you remove the cameras, they'll come in again to change, to put new cameras in. So you can put your own cameras in if that's the case. I will tell you this, um, They're what we like to call agitators. And agitators are not always mentally stable. And people who are not mentally stable are not always aware of how, what their behaviors are and how they look. And you telling them is not going to help them. It's, they're not going to see it. To agitators, everybody else is the problem. They're never the problem. Everybody else is the problem. So again, your best, your best safety for yourself, your best everything is to start looking now and preparing to move. And I know that's not what you want to hear. But what I wouldn't want to hear is I would have to live longer like this because they're not going anyplace. They're not going to leave. They will just, and if you say something to anybody, they will just get worse. So your best bet is to find some place. If you're in a lease, try to communicate with your landlord at how quickly you can get out of your lease. Um, and, and I wouldn't even tell your landlord because he will go to them and talk with them. Um, I would just maybe say it's work related relocation, whatever it is that what I'm hearing here is the path of least resistance and peace is going to be the best path 
that you could take. So moving forward, your best move is to move in silence and to move quickly or as quickly as you can. I know this isn't what you want to hear. This is the message your loved ones on the other side are bringing through for you. There's even if we remove the negativity, which we can clear your home now, it will be back. You know, I always say we we work from today backwards, but whatever happens tonight and tomorrow, there's not a lot that can be done with that. And with people like this, they get their kicks, they get their rocks off doing stuff like this to people. All you can do is look at it like, okay, God's trying to tell me I'm just not in the right place. Jennifer, I really hope this message was helpful. And I understand how frustrating yeah. the situation is because I've been in this situation a couple of I, times. I know I'm not crazy when I hear her talk about me and, oh, I hate you and you're a loser and, and I'm gorgeous. I mean, I know not, I don't sound humble right now, but <laughs> I'm not ugly and she is jealous. And our husband is like, he, hit, he tried to hit on me a few times. It's a very awkward situation. Yeah, I don't like having to see her in the parking lot and her hold the door for me the next day like a phony either. You know, I could do without all this. Yeah, so so the, I'm glad I called you. And yeah, I'm going to have to start looking to relocate. That's the only because you said you certified it for me, validated. You said they're not looking to move anytime soon. They've been there like six years. I'm only there two. Yeah, and they're not, oh. I'm going to, I'm just going to say thank you so much for calling in and I really appreciate you calling in and, and, you. and your dad loves oh. you. He just wants to make sure I say that, but I'm going to, I am going to say to you, your best, the thing you can do that is going to be best for you personally is to just move in silence and find peace, okay? That's gonna be the best thing for you. I really um, hope that is helpful for you. And I hope that brings you the answers that you needed. I'm going to go to the next question. And um, uh, in the uh, YouTube chat, and if I miss your question, please don't, don't get upset. I, I, there's quite a few and I don't know where I'm, um, I'm not, I'm just starting and I'm going to go from there. So I'm going to start here with this one. Um, hi, Tony, I've asked you about the neighbor who rented out my father's apartment in China without his permission. Um, the information you provided was very helpful. Well, thank you, Julie. I really appreciate that. That's very wonderful to hear. I do feel there's going to be a prosecution in this case. Um, and it's, it's going to be, you're going to be on the good side of it. So keep, keep going and don't, uh, don't, don't worry, um, don't worry about it because it's going to work out for you, okay? Um, so uh, I'm going to go to uh, the next caller who is 678. 678, uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Sonia and I'm calling from Georgia. How can I help you, love? Uh, I want to know, um, do you channel anyone from the other side for me? Yes. Um, or a I, message from me? I ask that you give me a name and a relationship and I will do my best to connect with them. Um, my ex-husband, his name is James Hardiman. James. Okay. I'm going to tell you, um, there's also a woman here who was pretty full, like, a. I I never know what the appropriate terms are sometimes, but she's a big woman. She was a bigger woman. Um, she's also here. She actually showed up first. And I feel like she's holding a young boy. Um, so whomever this woman was, I feel like she was bigger throughout 
her her life like especially in her adulthood she was also always a fuller or thicker woman so she's here and i know she popped in as soon as i started talking with you so i know she's here and if there is a child that was lost that child is here also or she had a child um either way well obviously she had a child because i feel like she would either be an auntie or a, a, a mom or a grandma, but she's definitely a thicker woman. Now your ex-husband, his, I'm sorry, his name was James, you said? Yes. James. Okay, so, <laughs> I'm so sorry, sweetie. So James had his ways, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. um, yes, I have James. Um, James' energy is more like a, sly sort of you know he could talk he could talk that's the way i'm gonna say it but if he's being serious and he's being serious now and he wants to bring you the message and he wants to say some things to you that he should have said before he left his body and the first thing he should have said with sincerity and truth is uh, that he was sorry. He didn't always do things the way he should have done them. Sometimes he did did some things that he should not have done. Uh, and you were you were right. <laughs> you know you 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 called him on a lot of things and uh, and and he's saying things like i just thought i was being a man and i tried and you know but it in the end this is this is how it was so uh, that that's the first thing is an apology he's not making excuses when he says you know being a man and stuff like that he's not making excuses he wants to genuinely apologize for some of his behaviors he wants to genuinely let you know um that uh there really is no excuse no matter how how he sh he should have been the first to step up and be that person the next thing he wants to say is i don't know what this means but this could be a confirmation did you guys ever like you know those folgers coffee cans those old school folgers coffee cans did anyone from the other side that you know of put like money in them <laughs> or hide stuff in those coffee cans <laughs> cuz I not that I know of okay if it were if it wasn't him and you it could be the other um it could be the the other person here but they're just showing me like a big coffee can and um like uh like putting like hiding stuff in it so i don't know who that is on the other side but they're showing me that and then the other thing that james wants to say to you is everything's going to be okay it's going to work out don't worry um you are i don't know if he's saying you're going to get past this or this to like this will pass like you're going to get past this it's good it's going to work out it's going to work out he's and i don't know what he's talking about but you should know what he's talking about but he's saying don't worry it's it's going to it's going to work out every it's going to work out there are a lot of people on the other side for you that are working to to help you Sweetie, I need to ask you a question. How how is your your heart? And I mean not only physically but emotionally. Like, like you've been like if if I'm being honest, what I'm hearing from the woman, the thicker woman is you've been through it and you just don't know how to you don't you're you're like like you don't know if you can keep 
like you can keep going but you're like how can i like it's getting more difficult for you to like to get past something or to get over something or to get to the next day to get out of bed with that like like okay i can get through this day sort of thing you're having like such a difficult time like overcoming or be, being in that space like like you've been through it. it i just keep hearing like you've just been through it you've been through it and so sweetie are you are you okay yes i have um been through it um i've had a heart attack two years ago um i just went through a divorce a year ago um and it's just uh you know unbelievable sometimes i feel like i can't even get out of bed to go to work i mean they denied me social security um it, it has it's been real rough i can't seem to get past my ex um even though he's very disrespectful and i just keep praying for god to just send someone for me okay um what's it uh, tanya right Ta your name's tanya tanya Sonia with a s yes okay i'm so sorry i i said your name wrong Sonia. I'm gonna, we're gonna do something here, and this is for anyone listening. I'm gonna call in, um, and you can do this, and everybody can do this, and come back to this point in the show, which is like the, about the 33 minute mark of the show. No, nope, the 26 minute mark of the show. I'm sorry, I looked at the wrong clock. Um, Sonia, I'm gonna do some clearing. I'm gonna, but I'm also gonna call in some angels. Um, on your behest to come in and you're you're gonna feel them. You should feel them. You might feel warm, you might feel tingly, you might feel uh, cool and goosebumply, whatever you feel or don't feel, you might feel nothing, it's okay, but we're gonna, they're going to, when I say we, it's really them. I don't, I, I just hold space. I just say, hey, can you come do this? And then they do, I see them now surrounding you there's five, Archangel Raphael, and then uh, Mikhail is in the back, and then there's surrounding you other light beings. And they are going to start this healing process on you to help your mind, because we think we need our heart healed, and we do. We need all the hurt and the pain and the suffering from, you know, everything to be healed but we need our mind to be healed because our mind keeps the cycle and the pattern going so we're gonna clear we're gonna heal they're gonna pull this and you know what i'm feeling is they're like a a tube let's just say a big tube they're lifting they're lifting it out of you is is what i'm seeing and what i'm feeling and you if you don't feel it it's okay what will happen if if you see it or feel it, some people will say all of a sudden the room is lighter, all of a sudden they feel lighter, like a weight has been, like just they feel lighter. If you feel that, that's okay. If you don't, it's okay. But the biggest thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start to um, rewind, rewind, rewind all the way back to two, no, one, no the day you were born, the day you were born, and your mind on the day you were born had clarity. So we're going to put that back in there, put that back in there. And we're going to kind of like reboot this or reset it. And then, and when, again, when I say we, it's them. And then it is going to have a lifting. Now, when you think of these things, it's almost like when you think of something that you can now just go, oh, I can't believe that. So it's gonna, it, and it will fade. And within a month, you will, this will be nothing within a month. And we, we want that. We want that because 
you know, as long as we have to be here or as long as we choose to be here, we need to choose to be here in our strongest and best way because we need to keep living. We need to keep going. We need to have the best possible life, whatever time is left. So if we're whatever age we are, like for so many years, it's been like this, right? We've been treated this way, disrespected this way, hurt this way. We Now we are free and we can choose to live in joy and happiness. So we, we like sweep away, we pull out all of what was, right? All the hurt, all the pain, we're clearing that, pulling it letting it go. It's, I'm going to tell you what I see personally as I'm looking at them work at, at, at you on you is they're pulling like all this um, energy out and it looks so heavy and dark, like wispy dark. <clears throat> and they're bringing it out. And there's a lot of times you want to just say things and you couldn't, and that's the throat getting caught up there. Ooh. And they're pulling it further and further and further back, almost like um, a storm cloud, and they're pulling it out and they're gonna let it go. And then they're gonna continue to work on your heart and your mind. And they're going to uh, heal some of the beliefs, okay? They're going to heal some of the beliefs to help you um, to help you to know, like the biggest message I'm getting is just because something somebody says something, it doesn't mean it's true. And nine times out of 10, when somebody says something to us or about us, that's how they feel about themselves. And so they're, they're just saying how they feel about themselves out loud to us. And that even though it's very difficult to sometimes accept that right away. And even if we know that, it still doesn't take away that burn, right? We have to keep pulling, 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 pulling all of that out. Now, what they're doing right now is they're going to take and mm -hmm, in your mind, well, they're showing me your brain where the synapses connect to make the beliefs and the patterns. And they're kind of dissolving, like, because when we have a thought, the first time we have a thought, it's just a little, like a little dot in our mind. And then we have the thought again, and it creates another dot in our mind. And then we keep thinking it, and it creates a line between it. And what we have to do is we have to take that out. We have to release that because it's just something, once somebody said it, we repeated it to ourselves, or somebody did something and we jumped to a conclusion about ourselves and we created this synopsis, this little recording. So they're <laughs> deleting all of those now. They're just going to delete them all and take them out. Now, sometimes this, people feel it right away. It doesn't mean everything changes right away. It can take up to a month until you feel or realize all of the changes that have come through for you. Oh, okay, Sonia. I hope I hope that this was helpful for you. I really hope this was helpful yes, for you. Yes, it was. Thank you. Um, you can call back anytime. I look forward to talking with you again. And please keep us posted on your progress. Okay, love. Okay, thank you. You are so, 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 so welcome. Um, you are so welcome. Okay, you guys, if you'd like to call in, 845-277-9131 is the call-in number. Um, I'm going to go to the next question. That's from Kate, and Kate wants to know, um, I, I would like to hear from Auntie Nan, thinking of her near her birthday. The first thing that comes through is that song, live a little bit, no, take a little bit, take a little bit of my, how does that song go? Where's Patrick when we need him? Um, give a little bit, 
give a little bit of my love to you. I think you know what song it is. I'm not going to keep singing it because, because I, I'm not getting the words perfect, but I think you know what song. She's saying live, she's living vicariously through and with you. Um, have fun, enjoy life, take advantage of the fun things and keep going and red velvet with cream cheese for her birthday. Like I see red, what looks to be red velvet with the cream cheese for her birthday. That's what she has for you. Thank you so much, Kate, for that. Oops, sorry. I'm going to go to the next color, who is 850. 850, what's your name and where are you calling from? It's Michelle calling from Florida. Michelle, how can I help you today? I talked to you last week about my boyfriend that been together for 11 years, that he was an addict. And, we, and you know, I had him leave because of his addiction. And, uh, you know, things are still real emotional. Just kind of give you an update. He's got all his stuff out. It's still kind of real emotional right now. But uh, there was something you said at the end of the show when I talked to you last time. And you said, call in next week. <laughs> you said that I was going to meet somebody new. And I was like, well, you kind of got my curiosity. I'm not really ready for somebody, but it kind of got my curiosity up, you know, too, you know. Michelle I feel kind of bummed out, you know. Okay, so the thing I'm hearing, and I understand, you know, the, the thing is um, <clears throat> sometimes the breakup for us is all at once and we're not expecting it, even though things may not have been perfect or may not have been going well, when it's a sudden breakup, we don't have time to, you know, slowly separate our feelings and addicts, um, they're, they're pushing all their feelings down. So they're not feeling it right. They're either drinking or taking something or to, uh, what do they call that word when you don't feel to not feel things, just to not feel things. You're going to, you're going to, the yeah. way I want you to do this is I want you to make a list of everything this person did to you. I want you to make a list and, and I sometimes will use post-it pads because we can't spend, we already, you already spent 11 years of your life um, trying to make it work and doing everything you could. Okay, that didn't help and that didn't work. So now take like little post-it notes and on each post-it note, write something that if this person did this to somebody you loved, you would have just been like, oh my God, are you, you've got to get Write everything he did that you did not like, that was not good, that was not loving, that was not caring on, on paper, post-it notes, whatever, and put it in different places of the house so that you can keep remembering. Because what happens is after a certain amount of time goes by, we, we start to forget the hurt and remember the good. And we need to not remember the good, right? Because it'll just go a, a whole new cycle. So put that up. And then I need you to start taking care of yourself, going and doing things for yourself. Whether you do little spa things at home, go to the gym, take a walk, get on a bike, whatever it is, farmer's markets or farm. This guy you're about to meet is in some way it's either it has i just keep hearing farm 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 that could be a farmer's market a farm a a uh maybe a farmer i don't know um but something you have the potential to meet this person in that type of environment okay so between now and then mm -hmm. take and do everything you can to kind of reinvent yourself or to take care of yourself all the times you neglected yourself because you were trying to take care of a full-grown person, right? Just a full-grown person that, that should have been doing at the bare minimum 50-50. So now you take care of you and then you, you start moving forward. And I do feel like this 
it's an outdoor environment wherever you meet when you meet this person you're going to meet this person outdoors okay love who hi excellent <laughs> i hope that i hope that that was helpful for you i hope that that uh and do you know what um I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna thank you so much for calling. And I'm so grateful that you called back and you did get that message. And I am going to say this, and this is for everybody that is listening, male, female, otherwise, I, I don't care. Here's, here's what I'm going to say. We always, or some people say, well, then what did we go through all of that for? like when it's a very difficult, challenging relationship, some people think the more challenging it is or the more difficult it is or the more on and off it is that it's it, like you're going through that for a big grand prize. This is not a reality TV show, folks. This is not the lost island of traps and boobies and, and booby traps is what I meant to say. And, 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 that's just if it's the, the the when you're in and don't get me wrong don't get me wrong i i got caught in that thing too in the past where like you know it was just unhealthy it was such an unhealthy situation and there's a point where you you're just thinking well whatever it is we're thinking at that point but here's the thing, we're not supposed to go through it. The fact is, what's it all for? Why did you go through that? To learn to love yourself enough to say no to that. Just to learn to respect yourself and love, and, and believe me, as I say this, it's sinking in. <laughs> for all of us to learn to love yourself enough to say no to that, to realize we can't save someone who is essentially, you know, not even in the fight. We can't fix a relationship or even have a relationship with a person who's not there. And when I say not there, I mean, they don't want the same outcome as you, or maybe they do, but they just don't have relationship skills. Okay. And we can't teach them because believe me, and this is for men and women and everything in between, every last partner they had also tried to teach them. Do you think their last girlfriend or boyfriend didn't have the same arguments and conversations with them? Yep, they did. Yep. But it's easier for some people to start over with somebody brand new than to make themselves brand new. It's easier for them to walk out of somebody's life than to fix themselves. And that's okay. The truth is it ends sometimes by force or by choice. We can choose to get ourselves out of an unhealthy situation or our team on the other side will pull us out because they, they, they can't even watch it anymore. They just look at it and go, oh, I've had enough of this. I just can't even watch it. This is like such a bad soap opera at this point. We're pulling their butts out. And what it was all for was for us to learn to love us. And we say, I love them more than I love myself. That was our first mistake. Stop that. Stop it. Don't do that. We love ourselves first and foremost, unconditionally and wholly in, in a whole way. And then when someone comes in, right, we love them equally 
but not more. And it should be the same from them. Because if we love ourselves completely, we don't need somebody to give us that love. But we do need them to care for us and respect us. Now, here's the biggest thing. Love, everybody has a different definition or a different action for the way they love. The way I love somebody and the way this person loves somebody and the way that person loves somebody, completely different. Completely different. All different. The real question is to have a healthy relationship. Does, is this person caring for me? Are they caring about me? And are they in those healthy ways taking care of me? And I don't mean necessarily financially, okay? Do they respect me? And are we building a future together? If those things are going on, you've got a chance. That's where you've got a chance. If somebody's serious about you, that's the minimum that will be being brought to the table. Okay, I'm going to go to the next question. Um, Laura, Laura, hello, hello, Laura. Um, Laura from PA, can you see what state, I think that's supposed to be, would be better for me to move to, Georgia or Tennessee? I can, Laura, would be. Is Georgia the best state? Is Tennessee? Tennessee. Georgia, uh, would Georgia in any way be good? No, Georgia would not be good in any way, Laura. Tennessee. Is there a state better than Tennessee? No, nope. Tennessee's the winner. Winner, winner. Uh, as of right now, Tennessee, um, Laura, if you want to know what area in the next show, come back and ask me what area of Tennessee would be best for you. I'm going to go to the next caller who is 504, 504. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, my name is Debbie from Louisiana. Louisiana. I love that. <laughs> How can I help you, Debbie? <laughs> Thank you. Oh. My my question, um, I have a question. Excellent. Um, my manager was is uh, the insurance people have to come in my apartment, and I kind of have some um, situations I have to take care of. Like my mom's there, and she is difficult to deal with. So I would like to know: Did she mean she's going to come in my apartment, and is it going to cause trouble? my neighbor's place on the side caught on fire and it's been like a year. So I guess they're finally taking care of it. And um, it's kind of opened up some old wounds for me with my childhood and living with my mom and like kind of being on the, you know, on the run, if that makes sense without going into too much yeah. with my mom. I get it. I get it. So here's what we're going to do for you. And I'm going to start right away with a clearing and then I'm going to give you your answer. First and foremost, we're going to clear okay. all childhood trauma. Now you may have to come back and okay. listen to this again, because sometimes childhood trauma goes in layers. They take what they can, what, when they can, but they also take what we're ready to let go of. So for you and your mom or you, for each person and their parents, we're gonna clear, release, let go of all childhood trauma. Holy, and the, holy, holy. And then the, ne and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to ask that uh, we have healthy, loving fam familia or family relationships. We're gonna clear, release anything in the way of, of, of anything stopping or blocking that. Now, the answer to your question is, and that's for anybody listening or, or watching, the answer to your question is, is this. Yes, they will come in. No, it will not be problematic. When they come in, I think they're just checking the walls or the, the walls and the wiring, okay? And it, it will not be problematic. I feel like it will be a bit of a disturbance, but it won't be problematic as far as 
like your mom being there or anything like that. Just explain um, okay. to anybody coming in uh, to let her be in peace, okay? Um, to be considerate and in peace and maybe on a piece of paper, write whatever condition is going on to be helpful. I do feel like the situation between you and your mom and your wounds personally are going to be um, subsiding a bit over the next month. I also feel like you are going to have some realizations, okay? And I, I really hope that this is helpful for you. Come back and listen to this clearing as often as you need. And you can play it very quietly in the background for your mom also, or just include her in the clearing when you're doing it. Okay, love? Okay. You said I would have familiarization? No, um, familia, family. Familia is a, like the, is a word for family. Oh. Okay. Um, sorry okay. about that. Okay. Uh, but yes, family, family. Okay, love? Okay. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Thank you so much. You are so, so welcome. I hope that was helpful. And I, I thank you so much for calling in. And I am going to say, um, you know, when my mom was here, we didn't always have the best relationship and it wasn't necessarily always her fault. <laughs> Um, and, um, but I will tell you this, when she passed or since she has passed or, you know, when she went into hospice and I realized she was passing, so I, I like instantly started apologizing to her for my part in everything and being so afraid because I had um, blocked off a certain amount with my mom out of fear of, you know, her reactions or, you know, the past repeating itself. And I really, in retrospect, even if she would have reacted the same way, I really regret not, not being my genuine self with her. Um, but she and I have talked since then, and we're good. We're good. But I do still, I have to live with that. So even if you have a challenging relationship with your mom or parent, or, you know, there's been stuff in the past, try to find a way to help yourself come to that now and have no regrets later. That's what I would say. Okay, then let me go to the next question. Who is going to be? Uh, Sally. Sally is asking, should I move back in with my mother, Juliana, or stay with my boyfriend? <laughs> I can't read your boyfriend's name. I'm sorry. It's just my eyes and the bright light shining in it. I'm going to try to read it over here. Noah. Um, I can't tell you what to do. I can tell you where you'll have the best result. So I'm going to ask each question individually, and I'm going to ask it a little bit differently. Is it in uh, Sally's best interest to move back in with her mom it is is it in her best interest to stay with her boyfriend no i actually get that it's in your best interest to stay with your mom or to move back in with your mom um i do feel like and i'm going to say this for what it's worth it you have free will and you can choose i do feel like the situation um with your boyfriend is not as healthy of a situation as it should be or harmonious of a situation as it could be at all times. Um, but that's not why they're, that's not the whole reason of why they're saying this. Um, there's something else going on here and your support system or your 
it's best for you at this time to, they're using the term relocate with um, your mom. Now, it's, it, I think it's for all three of you. It will definitely have a benefit for all three of you, okay? Um, and I, that's what I'm comfortable saying right now, okay? Uh, that's just what I'm comfortable saying right now. And again, it's not only because the situation with your, what I'm hearing is the situation with your boyfriend is not as harmonious as it could be, but there's also an aspect of this just about your mom herself. Okay, so I hope I hope that's helpful, Sally. I'm gonna go to the next color. I think the next color is 856. I don't know. 856, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, it's Rose Maria uh, from Jersey, and I think you mentioned my name, Rose Maria. Or is Marie? Maria, because I almost started singing the Santana song. Maria, Maria. <laughs> so go ahead. I'm sorry. How can I help you today, love? Um, if any, if there's any messages and from my mom or my father uh, in the position I'm in now with my brother, uh, if there's any message, what to do? Okay. Because my hands are tied. <laughs> if that oh. makes sense. Okay, so what's that? just let's just start with your mom's first name, love. Sure, it's Gina. Gina. Okay, so the first thing that I'm hearing, and I do see there's a number of people on the other side that are standing in a group for you, and they're like to my right here. And the first thing that I'm seeing is there's a red balloon, and then the song "99 Red Balloons." Da, da, da. I don't. I'm, I'm not going to sing the whole song. But the red balloon has a little box with a bow on it, okay? So I'm just going to tell you what I'm seeing first. The red balloon has a box, like a little flat jewel, like a box that a piece of jewelry would come in, maybe a bracelet. Um, but it's flat, and it's gold, and it has a bow on it or a ribbon and a bow on the top. So the balloon is coming, going up. It's going from your family, from your mom and, and your loved ones on the other side, and it's coming to you. It's not going to be, this is, this is just like, um, they're showing me they're bringing you something. Something is coming in for you. They're not showing me what it is. They're not letting me know what it is. They're saying within a week, you should know what this is. I'm going to say within a month, whatever situation you're in. Now, I want to be very clear. This could be the answer to a situation. It could be something that frees you up. It could be, it might not be a physical thing. It could literally be something you hear. 90 seconds. Uh, shoot a boot. Um, something you hear or something you see. It could be something Whatever it is, it's going to help you out of the situation you're in. It, and whatever that is, you're going to know whether it's like a light bulb moment or an epiphany or whatever that is, you're going to know when it comes in, you're going to go, oh, that's exactly what I needed. That's what I needed to know. Now I can move. Now I can move this way. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I'm I'm, I'm running out of time while I'm giving you this message, but I do hope that that was very helpful for you. And again, they're saying within a week, it might be that you hear this within a week and within a month, you know, you have your whole plan. It's all planned out. Okay. I love you so much. Have an amazing rest of the week.